welcome to Caesar Snack Sandwich. Today I have a quick video for you on inverse finance firms uh, looping, okay? So I do have this video here, uh, inverse finance uh, firm, fixed rate money market. I, you can watch that to kind of get an understanding of the underlying system, how this system works. However, today I'm going to uh, talk specifically about this, this looping down here that you can see inside here. Um, this video is going to assume you understand what the DBR token is, how it works, how this like fixed rate borrowing works and how these are isolated and so forth. Um, there's a lot of information here, so I don't want to try to cover everything. I just want to kind of highlight this, this, this stuff here, okay? And why I think it's pretty special. Okay, so as you can see, the first thing you're going to look at here is you're going to go down through these lists and you're going to see these purple words here and you're going to choose one of these collaterals that you want to use to kind of loop this up. Now, as you can see, the majority of the looping can be done with collateral that is a stablecoin or a yield-bearing stablecoin. However, there is one here where it's CVXCRV, where you can loop up to almost 2%, two times, sorry. And, you know, that's a little bit more risky because this is a volatile asset and dollar is a stablecoin. So looping stablecoins with stablecoins tends to be safer, okay? Now, it's not 100% safe, but it's a lot safer, okay? So you can kind of go through these and check the purple and see what, it, what we're looking at. We're looking at like 61% if you loop it 10 times. Uh, that's the, how the APY on that asset because this is a, also a yield-bearing asset. If you kind of click here or you just kind of hover here, you can see that this is a FRAX PYUSD dollar pool uh, put into convex farming CRVX and CRV rewards. So there is interest rate baked into this collateral. And you can loop it up to uh, 10, 10x and get this like 61%, okay? Now, uh, there is this other key factor here that says available to borrow. So right now, there's currently only $35,000 that's available to borrow. So that there's people have done this already. This die has, uh, you know, 1%, but like, as you can see, the die, <coughs> It's kind of using the die staked die uh, savings rate to kind of loop. So it would take some die and stake that die for S die, and then you can get some of that S die savings rate. So again, so you got to look at this available to borrow and kind of select your collateral based on what's going to what is currently available. It does say here limit resets in about you know seven and a half hours, so it's possible that. You know, th this will increase to uh, an amount, so you might have to wait for that to open or what have you. But today I'm going to use kind of this S uh, Athena, the Athena to kind of illustrate it because there's quite a bit of limit right now that people can use. And the APR is pretty high if you do loop it up to 10x. But there are some things you need to consider when you're doing this. So I'm going to open this up. And uh, so there's some information here. There's a lot of information, but uh, Let's first talk about uh, this, this the, the collateral asset. This is staked USDE, right? So if I take 100,000 of those tokens and use them as collateral, you can see that the, the value of those, those tokens is $110,000, and the Oracle price is roughly 1.11. So that's kind of how that, that, that this Oracle price kind of shows you the, the price of one of these assets that you need to kind of think about, okay? So now if I want to borrow, and let's say I put 2,000, it's going to say, oh, I got to borrow at least 3,000. So we can start with like 3,000. Now the reason for that is because this is main net, they, you know, liquidating a, pri uh, a position for that's only like a couple hundred dollars is, is costly and, and quite dangerous because no one's going to liquidate it, right? So they want at least $3,000 uh, borrowed versus. Now I could open this position and I would then have $3,000 with my $100,000 of backing, I have a super safe liquidation price. So this 1.01 or this 1.111 has to go all the way down to three cents in order for me to get liquidated in, in this position. So this is super safe, but this is not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about this looping. Now, again, I do want to mention that this is, uh, you, you do need to have the DBR in, in your wallet to pay for your interest. So you have this opportunity or option here. You can click this on and you can kind of select the amount of uh, months or days or years that you want to open this position with. And let's so, so let's say I said six months. And what this is going to do is it's going to increase my debt by 
by buying, you know, taking the dollar, buying that DBR, putting that DBR in my wallet. So when you open up a position on here, you're going to have DBR in your wallet. You need to leave it there. And it's going to be like taken from your wallet slowly to pay off your interest rates. If you don't have DBR in your wallet, then they're going to mint some DBR for you, increase your debt by quite a bit. So it's better to do it up front or to manage it and buy DBR if you want to try to speculate on the DBR price movements, okay? So I'm gonna put auto buy just to, for this illustration and kind of get into this leverage looping. So here we have looping, right? So like uh, I've got 100,000 of these, these tokens uh, the each one of those tokens is worth a dollar eleven and I got this liquidation price now if, if I start zooming like kind of looping this up right so if I go up to let's say almost three percent let's go to three X not three percent so three so now it's going to fetch some prices it's going to check some some numbers for me while, while we're waiting for this to refresh it's actually taking quite a long okay so there we go so now we have some information that we have to kind of look at and, and assess the risk that we're willing to take. Okay, so right now we're getting about 23% because I've, 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 you know, looped this 3x times and I've got a liquidation price of 85 cents versus this dollar, dollar 11. So I can kind of assess this if this I consider this to be risky or not and I can move it along and I, I can, you know, try to lever it up with a little bit more now what is actually happening is like if you wanted to do this manually what you would do is you would take this hundred thousand you would borrow some dollar you would take that dollar you would go and buy some more of these you would collateralize it you would buy borrow some more dollar you would buy some more of these with the dollar and then you would collateralize it as well. So that's kind of what 3x leveraging kind of does. Now this system is not actually going through all those steps. It's just gonna mint a whole bunch of dollar, immediately buy that or mint that, swap for that, and then collateralize it all in one transaction. So it doesn't have to do all those steps because it's able to pre-mint the, the, the dollar and then buy those assets. So that's kind of what's going on under the hood. Um, as a user, you don't really need to care whether it's manual or, or an automatic system. You just kind of have to assess this like liquidation price and so forth. Now, again, you know, this is a fixed rate term deposit. So right now in six months, I'm going to want to like come back and repay this. So especially if I've got this auto DBR on, I've pre-bought the the interest rate with debt on my position so this is not something you want to loop up uh, choose six months as your duration or whatever and then come back in six days to repay this right because you're gonna have all this extra DBR in your wallet you're not gonna have then you're gonna it's gonna be hard to unwind this position because you're gonna have to sell that DBR to get back some of the dollar and you might even end up with less than you than you than you started off with because you're you'll have to unwind it carefully and you're prepaying this position so this is the type kind of thing that I you have to kind of really assess whether or not you know you want to run this thing for six months now you could do six days right but then in six days you better be back here to unwind this thing right or otherwise you're going to get hit uh, quite quite a substantially with with uh, with penalties for not paying off uh, your position in time okay so that's kind of it uh, there's a lot of information here there's a lot to kind of consider uh, there's a lot of risk, but make sure you kind of understand everything. I, I think I, I've given you enough information to kind of really understand what's happening here. But what makes this very special, in my opinion, is that this is looping at a fixed rate APR. There's a lot of protocols out there that allow you to do this kind of looping. Even Aave, you can do looping. It might not be zappable in a single click, but you can loop on Aave as well. However, most of the other protocols, they have a variable interest rate. And that makes it some, like looping on a variable interest rate kind of requires you to monitor it more closely because those interest rates on some of those protocols can get very high, very fast, very instantly. And then you're kind of, your debt is growing 
at a leveraged up rate right and then you you come back and you're like you're 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 you, you owe a lot more than what you have so being able to get this fixed rate borrow in 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 a looping system in my opinion is pretty valuable and worth a consideration of the risks that are inherent with this kind of looping and leveraging stuff okay so uh that's it for today i hope this is useful and interesting and i thank you so much for watching and goodbye